Maybe that's... because we sit differently. I sit without my knee in the cabinet. Yeah, because you can you, you can knee. bend your right knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm stuck with a perma ninety degree angle on my until I get it. You're a, like a fucking pirate with a peg leg. <laughs> I got. I got a torn meniscus and a torn ACL in my right Jesus knee Christ. that I don't want to have surgery on. Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. It's Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, and rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Ramp Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And tonight we're doing another comparison, this time with Ben Romick, an old versus new. What do we got in front of us right now? We have the first Ben Romick cast strength from when Gordon McPhail took over uh, the Urquharts. Yes. Took over Ben Romick. Uh, this is fr- bottled in 2011, distilled in 2001. All bourbon cask, if I'm not mistaken. 2001 distillate. Yeah. Um, This goes way far back. I don't think I've tried anything this far back from Ben Romick ever. I have not. And we we always have our boy James to thank for this kind of stuff. Yeah, James is going into the archives, pulling out some dusties for us, shipping them over, and being like, guys, try this. He's actually, like, single-handedly, like, created a a category of whiskey rants, which is old versus new. Yeah. Yeah, this, he did it with the done lots of old yeah new. the Lumreeks yeah the Glen Alicky tens right like we did the original yeah and First now this edition. yeah and the twelves and is the Glen Alicky twelves yeah you're right yeah it is always cool to see how a distillery progresses and how it changes over time uh, we will be comparing it tonight with one of the newer Ben Romick uh, cast strings this is a vintage 2012 batch number two um, 59.9 percent ABV. Um, I believe this is majority sherry cask. Yeah? Sherry cask yeah. influence. Yeah, yeah. It's a combination, but there's. I mean, based on the color, you can tell that there's quite a bit of sherry cask in here. So we can assume that it's probably majority. Yeah, both these coming in right around ten years old, give or take uh, a couple months. But they're over. They're both over ten, right? Yeah, they're both at least ten years old. So this one was distilled twenty twelve and bottled twenty twenty two. This is the newer one, obviously. Um, the Vintage 2012 Batch 2. Yeah, they, they won't come in under 10. Yeah. I think that's their rule. What's cool is this one's bottled at 60.0% on the dot. Yeah. And this is 59.9%. So you're not going to get a better comparison than this tonight. <laughs> do you want to do them blind and see if what one has more ABV? <laughs> I mean, the problem <laughs> is if we poured them in these glass, <laughs> the, the see-through glasses, so now we can tell. Um, how about this old school Ben Romick text, man? I kind of like the old school Ben Romick. Do you like it? I, I like it for sure. They've changed it twice since this bottle. Yeah. So it, it went to those like funky, like bottle script. I don't know if you remember that bottle, but yeah. it had like writing actually all up the bottle, mm-hmm. um, after this ver- version. And now I, I still, I really like the, I do like the, the new one. I like the the whole thing about the new one. I like, yeah. I like the labeling. I didn't love the labeling at first, but it actually grew on me. Uh, the red text, the white label, um, and then the new bottle. The, the new bottle is really cool. So one really cool thing I noticed about this old Ben Romick is this what it says on the back. This whiskey has been bottled at natural strength and color without chill filtering. It is a characteristic of whiskey at this strength that a completely harmless sediment may form in the bottle. The whiskey may also turn cloudy on the addition of water they're saying that back in 2011 yeah before i don't think anyone else was saying that back then in the bottle that's a really cool thing i think that they put on there it's a very cool thing actually probably around this time 2011 i'm trying to think back i bought a bottle of weiser's red letter like the original release of well maybe it's not the original do you remember the wooden box weiser's red letter oh yeah that's a famous uh, canadian whiskey yeah yeah so I bought it and I thought it was like something was wrong with it because this was like way before my whiskey in the six days. Uh, it had floaties like all over and they look like little like congealed oil floaties. Okay. Little did I know that that's just what like chill filtration removes. Right. Uh, and the reason why it was more prominent in, in the Weiser's Red Letter is because it was a 45% alcohol whiskey. It wasn't bottled at 46% where they could have avoided a lot of that. Right. Um, but anyway... 
I digress. I just thought that that's really cool that they were putting that on the bottle because I had no idea. And they were back then informing guys like me that were yeah. just completely like oblivious to yeah. it until Ralphie came around. Like he probably, when did Ralphie come around? Around 2011. Very true. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But obviously this was a, a pre Ralphie influence thing. A really cool thing because you do see this on different labels now. Like I think Spring Bank puts it on their label sometimes. Uh, maybe an Ardbeg maybe sometimes does as well. Maybe um, Brook Lottie, I think, does that maybe on their labels too. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Um, but yeah, for for them doing that back in the day, I mean, maybe some old bottle stuff, but I just don't know. I've never seen that on a label like this old before. Have you nosed the old one yet? Yeah. Wow. It's weird. It's different, right? It's weird. It's cool. I like it. It's very... I'm really surprised, and I I, don't, I would like to know when Ralphie said that because we we said Ben Romick is like the Springbank that's not in Springbank on the channel, and then we weren't aware that Ralphie had said that before us, and I really want to know when Ralphie said that because. So the funny thing was about like saying that you know Ben Romick is the Springbank of Highland, when we talked to our boy Aquavite. <laughs> we mentioned that, right? That Ralphie had said that. And he's like, no, 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 I said that to Ralphie. Like, Ralphie got that from me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Aguavite is taking claim to coining um, Ben Romick, the Springbank of Highland. It's funny how everybody's taking claim to that. It does, though. It does. Like, I mean, wow. This old one is unbelievable. Um, pretty P-Boss different. in the background, he should have, he should have a pour P-Boss, of this. Yeah, get a pour of this. Um, very different from any Ben Romick I've had before. Right? Like there's still those like underlying characteristics. Like there's that that grassy, funky peat in there. Yeah. And it's all bourbon cast. So like that's also a contrast. What we speaking of contrast, we have the Ben <laughs> we have the Ben Romick peated bourbon cask contrast up there i wonder how that would taste in comparison with this we can figure it out we can actually go at that in a second i'll grab it should probably get a couple more glasses (laughs) grab some glasses um yeah this old ben romick my goodness um crazy like fruit coming off of it as well getting like some orchard fruit definitely like some lemon lemon for sure. I haven't even Big tasted the, the new one yet. I, I almost feel like it's going to be too different than the new one. The color on the, the new contrast is a lot lighter. On the finish of this old one, it's like creme brulee. It's very viscous. Does it say the, um, the like PPM? Honey. There's so much honey on it. Uh, I don't think, I'm I don't bumping think into this P- mic all over the place. I don't think they list PPM on any Ben Romig. They do. On the contrast, they do. What so this one on is there? 42 ppm. Okay. So pretty substantial, 42. Um, when you compare stuff like Ardbeg is like around, what, 50? 45, 50. Yeah. Um, this Ben Romic cash rank, the new one, the 2012 um, batch two. vintage, yeah. batch two, bottled in what, 2022? Yep. Has like a candy cane almost, like strawberry candy cane nose. Yeah, and you get like a little bit of like Christmas spice maybe on the nose as yeah. well. A little bit of spiciness. Um, I guess you could attribute that to the sherry cast influence. Oh yeah, that's good. A little campfire smoke maybe in there. That's really nice. Yeah. Definitely more sherry influenced. Yeah. Way, way, way more. Yeah, I mean, the comparable... Is it comparable? I don't know. Like, I don't think so because it's, yeah, it's not, well, that's not the purpose of the video really. It's, <clears throat> it's more of like a trying how it's changed old versus new. Right. Mm. I wonder why they decided to go with a blended cask maturation for their new cast ranks. Cause the last few have been a combination of sherry and, and uh, bourbon. Yeah. And majority first fill sherry. Because that's delicious. That's a great pour-and-play whiskey. The finish on that old one is really, really good. I wonder... 
This is at a time where whiskey was just starting to get pick up steam again. Yeah, 2011, just starting to pick up steam. Not even quite like getting popular again. I, no, <clears throat> it wasn't popular at all that time. Right. So there's a good chance that there's older whiskey in this. Yeah. There's a good chance that there's older whiskey in the uh, original Ben Roma cast strength. I know, well, actually, wait. If, it, if it's a vintage, I think there's a rule against that, isn't there? I think so. So uh, it doesn't say vintage on the bottle, but it does say the date that it's, that the original, yeah, maybe. So it says distilled, distilled bottle, so distilled I, think it's 2001. Legit, I think it's legit to the age. Yeah. Um, Interesting. But are you saying that it drinks older? It does drink like, older. Yeah. But then again, I'm going to try the contrast, and they're about the same age. So this, this old Ben Roma, it definitely shines on the finish for me. I mean, it's, it's crazy good. It's like cake. It's like lemon cake, and like it's like you're eating lemon cake beside a campfire. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a great depiction. There's way more um, icing sugar in the new contrast. Mm. I think Ben Romick really shines with just bourbon cask. It really, really does. The distillate is fantastic, and it works really well with bourbon cask. <clears throat> it's a good thing to be good at, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's the true showcase of a whiskey. Like, have you ever had that Macallan that was purchased by a independent bottler that was just bourbon cask? Have you ever tried that one? Did I try that? I know I did, and it was garbage, I was not wasn't it? impressed. <laughs> it was garbage. Yeah, I was not impressed. Yeah. Um, so that's what I mean. Like bourbon cask influence shows the quality of the distillate. Like I there's mean, no escaping that. There's some distillates, obviously, like Macallan. You know, they don't do just ex bourbon for a very good reason, right? Because it's trash. Exactly. They, they their distillate works better. Or best with sherry. With sherry. And even if they put a little bit of ex bourbon or American oak or whatever in there, it's not that good. You know what the absolute worst without sherry influence is, in my opinion? What? Glendronic. There's like <laughs> five or six other Glendronics that are not sherry cask influence that I've tried, if not more, and none of them have I been can good. think of one of the worst whiskeys I've ever tried in my life, and it was a Glendronic peated, peated port. port. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, God, that was Dude, so bad. The their Madeiras sucked. Their, there was a few that I had that were like older whiskeys, 18, 19 years old, and they all sucked. Yeah. Their Towny Ports, not good. Glendronic is the worst distillate in the market, and they're just <laughs> getting really, really good sherry cask. Yeah, I mean... That must be what it is. Yeah. Or, or it only works with sherry cask. We've had some hit and miss Glendronic single casks in our day. Mm -hmm. been some great ones been some like oh i paid way too much money for this yeah do the tobacco note i get on this glendronic constraints peat smoke is crazy it's delicious it's and like it's it's, it's tobacco leaf tobacco leaf and icing sugar oh that's so good right like that white powder sugar that like my mom used to mix with i don't know what to like get like coat i don't know if that's an italian thing is that when you're like, you know, you got like a cake and you're like just hitting the sh powdered sugar stuff off of yeah, it? Yeah, so Italians, they mix it with like, I think, water and something else. And it be it becomes like a topping for a cake. Mm. And it like kind of like sticks to it. Okay, so yeah, we were talking about something different. But I get what you're saying. It is yeah. very like icing sugar forward. Yeah. <clears throat> These are all good, man. Ben Romick. Like... It's so sad because they've been around forever, and it took us forever to get into Ben Romick. Yeah, you know what? I have an old style peat smoke at my place, and I don't know. Maybe they went through like a time when like it just wasn't the greatest. Like I had that bottle, like it's like it's okay, but it's not like it's not like the stuff they're putting out now with these constraints or the or the vintages or even this old vintage. Yeah. Did they go through a time when there's just like it was a lull, maybe? Yeah, I mean we have the fifteen here. This you just bought this recently. We tried this at a at an event. Yeah. And it was great. 
Uh, it stood out. It stood out. And, and it's just it's just a 43% 15-year-old. 43%, yeah. which is, I mean... We don't drink 43%. On the whiskey rant, you're hearing us rave about a 50, uh, 43% whiskey, but... Yeah. I, I bought the old one when I was just getting into scotch, and I did not like it. Yeah. But it could, and to 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 the um, defense of <laughs> clang clang clang. We're gonna take down the audio. Okay. <laughs> to the defense of the distillery, it could have been just my palate wasn't ready for mm-hmm. it at the time, right? Yeah, I mean, you. Ha- I think you have to. You have to explore Isla in order to really appreciate Ben Romick, if that makes sense. Yeah. I or mean, Cameltown. It's with anything, right? Like, you have to drink enough to know what makes something different. Yeah. And, like, is it different better or is it different worse, in your opinion? And the more library and catalog of stuff you tried, the more accurately you can decipher that exact information. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, did you officially review the new one? No. We're going to score these, yeah? Okay. I think we should. That's what we do. We score stuff. We score stuff. I don't remember what I gave the um, cash, the contrast. The contrast 46%, so I'm not going to score that one. But you can check that out in my archives. Um, it, was, it was based on the old scoring system, the other one. So... Man, little... these are all really good. We're um, and like these are available, the two newer Ben Romics right now. Mm-hmm. You can get them. You can find them. The cash things are getting harder to come by. They're selling out faster. Ralphie had something to do with that. Ralphie, he gave yeah. a huge review to the 2010 batch one. I right. believe it was. Yeah. Big score, right? Big 90 score. was it? I think so. Yeah, I think he went 90 on that. Or did was it the one that you have here? No, I think it was the other one. Okay. This one got really good. Re- or the Batch 1 2012 got really, really good reviews as okay. well. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, when you see these things, like, they're well-priced, too. Like, they're not crazy expensive. Uh, like, what are you getting them for? Like, around 120-ish? I was going to say 120. Yeah, yeah. about like 120 all in. Yeah. Which is That's great. Canadian. So yeah. like you're looking at like a hundred less than a hundred bucks US. Um for a cash strength at this quality, it's you know, what it's what you're paying for nowadays. It's like it's a good that's that's good value nowadays, yeah. In the whiskey world, we're we're known we used to be known as the guys that only drink expensive whiskey. <laughs> and and honestly, we've gravitated so much more toward like budget but just quality expressions now that like we cannot be well you have able- to yeah you have to move off the top 10 scotch distilleries like as far as brand recognition is yeah. concerned you have to just get those the fuck out of the way yeah because i agree they're overpriced yeah. and the quality's dipped and i'm 100%. talking about like McAllen and Ardbeg and, and, and distilleries like that yep when you move into these like secondary distilleries that's where you find the value mhm um it's stuff you know it's it's they don't have like giant advertising they don't put like stupid gimmicky stuff in their advertising campaign right. they just want to sell you good good scotch yeah um and that's what the value is nowadays right like yeah it's like now like think about it like we're paying over a hundred dollars for a 10 year old cast strength where before like you would never dream of that no right yeah that's fantastic I'm I'm surprised they moved off doing all bourbon cask, or or why they don't offer like every year they do a batch one and a batch two. Why not one batch is the sherry forward one, mm. one batch is the bourbon forward one. Why not this? Why not do three batches a year? One hundred percent sherry. One. Sherry bourbon mix, one hundred percent bourbon. I like the way you, I like the cut of your jib. Right? Yeah. Should I work for Ben Romick? I would love to work for Ben. <laughs> I, that is the one distillery I would leave whiskey in the six for. Them and obviously Springbank. I would leave whiskey in the six for any distillery. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> any distillery. No, there's there's some that I couldn't like. I I always like feel bad for the ambassador that like is like stuck to like a Macallan or like a, a distillery that you just can't like support anymore because you got too far into whiskey to like know that you're just selling bullshit. 
I get it, but like, McAllen's a bad example because those McAllen reps love their life because they're they're just living it. Oh, they're living the life, but like you gotta stand in front of an audience and. I know for a fact a bunch of those guys are like they're whiskey aficionados. Like they know what they're talking about, mm-hmm. so they're standing in front of a bunch of people and just like selling bullshit, like just <laughs> lying through their teeth. Like, yeah. oh yeah, you get this like great, uh, like no, you don't get great anything. It's all, I mean, it's good, but you're not you're not behind this brand. You're not proud of them for bottling at forty three percent. You're not proud of them for chill filtering. Do you know why Ralphie doesn't go to whiskey events or anything like that? Because he doesn't want to be fucking sold this, like, garbage yeah. crap. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be told about, like, all this, like, mumbo-jumbo ad shit that you've created in the distillery. Yeah. Like, I don't want to hear your marketing. I don't want to hear, like, you know, your water or your cast or your story about how, you know, 8,000 years ago they started, like, you know, peat smoking your shit. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Like, I hate that. Yeah, and, and I love like the water one he uses a lot. Right. He talks about that a lot. Yeah, like this water trickles down from the this mountains. The be- yeah. Past these frog buttholes, and it's just like, it's just <laughs> farted into the glass so nicely. There's, there's, there's a few places in the world that have like high quality, incredible water. And I don't know if Scotland's one of those places. Yeah. Right, like you're talking about a place where it's been civilized for many, 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 many years, versus like, for example, Yukon territories where like glacier water. Yeah, I was watching a person just like <laughs> filling their water bottle with like a stream coming off a glacier, like legit filling her water bottle and then just like scoops it up and drinks it. Yeah. And just like that's the best water I've ever tasted in Should my life. Should we insert the clip from Waterboy from Waterboy when he's got the glacier water in the little thing? That's water from a glacier in Alaska. It, it was blessed by a, an Eskimo medicine man. Ace two O. No, I, I, like two brewers is doing a bunch of things right, but it is no like. They're actually legit getting their water from glaciers. Yeah. Shelter Point's legit getting their water from from a glacier in a mountain. You know what I mean? Like, is any Scottish distillery actually doing that? They're they're they got to give themselves more credit. They got to stop talking about their water and saying like we're just that good that we're the best in the world. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you don't have your own bottling facility. That means that you're taking your spirit to a bottling plant. Right. And then you're at their mercy for whatever water they have there, right? Because you're taking it there yeah, in like a big vat, like a steel drum. What do they take it in? Like steel drums or something? I don't even know. Plastic vats. Yeah. Whatever. There's... They bring it in a big vat. It's 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 at cast strength, right? And they, they're just, they're watering it down at the bottling plant when they when they bottle it. So... Yeah. Their distillate is coming off of their own water supply and their own stills. Yes. But then if they're taking it to a bottling plant, like you said, they're, they're and they're reducing water. it to 46%. Yeah then they have to add water. Right, so that the, you're at the mercy of the bottling plant's water when you're not doing cast strength. It's distilled water. It's it's fine. It doesn't matter what I'm it sure is. I'm sure it's good water. I'm sure it's like yeah. very much nicely, you know, I'm sure they're checking it all the time. It's very good water, but like at the end of the day. Speaking of water, this is like way off topic, but this kind of reminds me of, I was drinking Desani the other day. And I was is drinking- that, a, Is that an Italian name? I don't think so. It's it's from, uh, it's a Coke product. It's a. I know it's a Coke product, but like, what's the name mean? Dasani, Dasani. I don't. I, don't, I think I'm just pronouncing it like a Italian, like an Italian. <laughs> are you drawn? Dis- are you drawn towards it because you think it might be Italian? No, I'm not actually. I used to. I used to hate it, and then I was drinking it the other day, and I forget. What, it might have been uh, Silent Bob in the background here, but yeah. As I was drinking, I'm like, did, did they change this water? Like, is it better for some reason? It got Maybe. better. Yeah. It did get better. I don't know what happened, but it, it's gotten better. One thing I noticed about, we're on the topic of Coca-Cola. Yeah. Coca-Cola, the flavor profile has changed since COVID in Canada. Remember like going to the US maybe when you were younger and drinking like an American Coke? Yeah. And it tasted different? Yeah. Because they're sourcing their products from different spots, right? I think it's the sugar. I don't know what it is. It could be anything. Mm-hmm. 
but they have changed the makeup of Coca-Cola in Canada 100%. It tastes like trash now. I, I I believe you. I haven't had a Coke in I don't even know how long. Yeah, I would have the occasional Coke. Like, it's good. I used to, like, love drinking Coca-Cola with Chinese food. Yes. For whatever reason. Movie theater, movie, movie theater fountain pop was always my thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. But now the makeup is different. And yeah. I haven't, I haven't gone back to Coca-Cola. I hate Coca-Cola. Um, apparently, the Mexicans use, like, sugar cane and... Their their Coca Cola is the most sought after Coca Cola. I agree, and you can buy it here. Very yeah, heard, select. Yeah, it comes in like stores. Walmart has it every once in a while. Yeah, a couple like a burrito place that I frequent used to have Mexican Coke. There's it's there's, like four hundred. It's like four fifty a bottle. It's expensive. There's a um, a place called Food Fight that myself and P Boss uh, go to every once in a while. And they have like a selection of really cool pops, really cool candy. It's yeah, it's a really good place. Shout out, shout out to uh, Food Fight. <laughs> send, send some coupons if you want. <laughs> Sponsor the show. <laughs> Sponsor the show. Compare the peat influence between the old cast strength and the new cast strength. Because I think that's maybe how you're gonna tell the difference of like, so this is like differently matured. How's the smoke different can we can we pretend like we're those guys that add water to their whiskey and just like do that with ppm right now <laughs> you're guess, bringing down the guess ppm the, guess the ppm this is right 42 now? ppm i just brought it down to 38 ppm so we have we have the contrast which clearly states it's 42 ppm yeah i think like so i there is a huge difference for me in like how the smokiness the peatiness translates between the old cast strength and this newer cast strength i feel like the older one is more kind of like this barbecue char maybe like campfire smoke where the newer one i think richard probably is gonna watch this video and want to punch us in the face because i'm pretty sure he told us the ppm that they always bottle that and it's I, always the same i forget i totally forgot it's not always the same is it not no, I think they, they do, like, these peat smoke ones are a bigger PPM. Yes. Right? Like, the 42 is, like, is their biggest. Right. I think the the rest is, like, 8, if I'm not mistaken, or, like, 10. It's, like, cra- it's like not as much as you would think. And I'm pretty sure they do a combination of barley, right? They, they don't do... When they distill their barley, it's not... It's not like a local barley. It's not 100% peated, right? They put some peated right. barley in and they put some, some sorry. Correct. put some smoked, peat smoked barley with some regular barley. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it's yeah, not, you're it's on. Not, yeah, okay. you got it. Um, I would say that maybe it's the ABV, but I feel like the cast strength is not far off from the contrast peated wise. Yeah. It's But it's a different kind of like... I find that the sh- like sherry for Ben Romick really adds a different element, like a really funky peat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this comparison is, is tough. Like, who knows where they sourced barley from, you know, back... How long ago was this again? Do you get... Looking at, like, this is 13... This was the thing that was bottled, like, what, 13, 14 years ago. Well, it was distilled in 2001. Yeah. So it was 22 years ago distilled. Right. So and about the 20... barley sourced 23 years ago, probably. Right. To like, you know, to ferment and then all right. that other stuff. Yeah. Or it's... sorry, yeah, germinate and then I'm all that sure other stuff. I'm sure the source is probably different now. It might be. Right? It might be. Um, I notice like a, almost like a magic marker note in all of the sherry influenced Ben Romix. Yeah. Oh, you're a teacher. Are you allowed to have like those scented markers at schools anymore? I've I've never come down on a kid for having them, but like technically it's a scent free zone. You know, oh, you know to wear I cologne. See. You know, yeah, to yeah, wear yeah, like yeah, perfume yeah. because people are allergic. Because like back when I was in school, we had those like. Those are the best. They used to like, called, like smell Mr. the hell out of Mr. those. Mr. Sniff or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird name. It's like like the blueberry one. I just like oh man, just spend you're an just, hour right? like, like, nosing the hell. Out of that just name. taking the whiffs like you would not believe, man. Like out of control, crazy. 
So PBOS is showing us in the background that the sherry uh, contrast peated is at 36 or 32, 35? 35. 35. Uh, but this one says it right on at 42 ppm for the newer, uh, okay. the, the bourbon cask one. Yeah. Okay, let's mark these bad boys. What do okay. you think? Yeah. If um, I move this mic, does it does it annoy you guys? You got to tell us that in the comments. Like, I don't know what it does. Like, it, is it doing anything to the it, sound? It should be fine if you... If you We're not wearing headphones. We're not like Joe Rogan-esque. We could wear headphones and listen to ourselves talk, but... Uh... Okay, so um, PBOS is very like very useful. We yeah, get, uh, I think we got to start giving him like one percent of the of the to, whiskey ramp podcast. Because he's he's looking up stuff for us. He's <laughs> yeah. like he's our information guy. Yeah, so he just let me know that I gave this contrast an eighty eight based on my old scale, mm -hmm. which I stand by. Like this is a great whiskey. Yeah, it's a great whiskey. Um, I'm gonna go. 87 based on my new scale of the old one. Okay, so the oldest Ben Romick cast strength. The very first ever Gordon McPhail owned Ben Romick cast strength. Ah, no, you know what? I lied. I'm going to give that an 88. I'm going to give that an 88. Let's go. Can and I'm going to give this an 88 as well. Wow. I, I love them both, but they're wow. very different. Like, wow. This is like, man. I don't know what it is about my palate. I don't know if you guys watched the last whiskey rant, but spoiler alert if you haven't, I picked Jeremy's mix and it was <laughs> bourbon heavy. This is right up my alley right now. Yeah. Peated bourbon cast strength scotch yeah. is delicious. That that is a fantastic whiskey. I agree. So yeah, I technically these are all 88s, but the old con uh, contrast is based on the old school, uh, like the old so scoring system. So your new scoring would be eighty six. Essentially, this would be an eighty six if yeah. I had to like translate, and then these two are eighty eight. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I would probably echo for the most part. I'm gonna say that the old Ben Roma cast rank is my favorite. It's for sure an eighty eight of a hundred for me, and uh, no eighty nine, eighty nine because like it's shot that finish. It is like, it's just, it's a lemon cake and smoke. It's so like, good. it's so delicious. So good. So, so delicious. Um, as far as the Ben Romick, the contrast peat smoke is concerned, love the nose because it's like, it's just, it reminds me of, of cigar tobacco leaf. Like, it's so good on the nose. Yeah. Um, that's a very solid uh, 87 for me on this one. Nice. And then this... This is the 2012 batch two. I think I still like the 2010 batch one is like my favorite one I've tried so I'm far. With you. I'm with you. Yeah. And that for me was an 88. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit less on this one. I'm gonna go 86 and a half out of okay. this one. Um, but very, very good. Very, very good. And for like, if I was gonna score value points, I'm putting value on these. So they'd all go up to like where I would recommend you buying them for sure. Yeah. 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 Like, the contrasts are like less than a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at like around a hundred to 120 for these bottles. Um, well worth it for sure. Mm -hmm. In today's marketplace, like they, that's a good price for what you're getting in the quality for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I share the same. I think I do like the 2010 a little better than this 2012. So if I scored that lower then, then I'm going to boost that one as well. Cause yeah. that, that was really good. I wonder what this would go for, like an auction. Probably not that much. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, it's twelve years old from the bottling date. If I can find an auction price on this old uh, cast strength, I'll put it here, and you'll you'll see. <laughs> Are we really gonna regret opening that bottle? We can't. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> James, be like, you guys not uh, open that. Ben Romick yet? It's just like <laughs> sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. We, we we loved it so much. We finished it in one night. <laughs> we couldn't even we review it. We were too drunk to record the episode even. Crazy. <laughs> no, it was great. Thank you. Thank you again, James. Uh, you know, just... We owe, like, royalties to that guy. <laughs> I I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> right? Um, leave us a comment down below. If you have discovered Ben Romick and you liked it, what was your first expression that you tried that was like, okay, wow, Ben Romick, actually, this is like really solid stuff. Yeah. Um, I think for us, it was like, what was it? 
It had to be the the cash The vintage the, 2010. Yeah, the 2010. The vintage 2010, I think. It was the For us, we kind of like turned a page on Ben Romick for that for that bottling. Yeah. And now, like like you said, I just I just bought that Ben Romick 15. Just yeah. their core range 15 is so so good. And like even talking, you know, um, to um to Richard. Richard, yeah. He's like the Ben Romick 15 is the one that we just have open all the time. Like that's our go to daily. That's what we drink all the time. It's funny because I actually was gonna say I think I would take it over the 21. Like I like the 21. The 21 is great, but. It's the it's the heavy sherry influence in the fifteen is a little higher than other expressions. I think for me the fifteen is a perfect balance of smoke. Like the smoke integration to that Ben Romick fifteen yeah. is phenomenally good. And if you are not a peat smoker, uh, a peat <laughs> scotch drinker, yeah. and you want to like dabble a toe, yeah, Ben Romick fifteen for sure. That's the one. Hundred percent. That is the one. That's this is the new Highland Park eighteen. This is the new like you want to dabble with Pete, go with the the Ben Romick fifteen. Yeah, because you're gonna get everything you want, and you're gonna slowly integrate yourself into the Pete world. It has a perfect balance, and I think that someone that um, isn't a huge like if they try Isla and they're like, oh, it's too way too, too much, much. This is a perfect amount. It's like I don't think you're gonna give this to someone. And they're gonna be like they're gonna hate it. They're gonna like this one for sure. I think so. Yeah. It's so approachable. It's so balanced. It's so, so good. Yeah. It needs to be 46. That's a discussion for another day. We, we already had that discussion before, but... We have. But you know what? Like, I'm, I'm starting to come around a little. I know it's blasphemy to say, but, like, there's there's nights where 43 is just okay, man. Like, I, I'm okay with just a yeah. pour and play whiskey. I'm watching the Leaf game. I just That's want it, something. Right? Like, I'm going to have two or three pours of maybe. Yeah. 43% is okay. That's the thing. There's There's lots of instances where I'm, like... I'm watching a movie or like I'm watching a ball game or whatever. And I just want to like sit with a tumbler. Yeah. I want to sit back. I don't want to get up. I want to pour maybe like three ounces or something. Right. It, it can't be cast strength. That's too no, much. That's way too much. It's way too much. You're going to be loaded as soon as you stand up. Right. Like you can't do it. And like most of the stuff we buy, a lot of stuff we buy is cast strength. Yeah. So you need to have that like that 43 or whatever. Or even like you're on like you know, a back deck. Right. You're around the campfire. Right. You want to like sit for a couple hours with a couple ounces and just sip nicely. That's right. Right? 43 is okay for that. 43 can, can be okay. I know, be okay. I know we've knocked I it know. before. Yeah. We've knocked it so hard yeah. that uh, people are like off. <laughs> Never watching Whiskey Red again. But this is the exception. I, I think that's like, we should also emphasize the fact that yeah. It's this one. Will, will we yeah. still do the same thing at 46 and enjoy it more? Maybe, yeah. We yeah. probably would. Maybe. But yeah. we'll, we'll take this at 43. We'll never. We have I, to. I honestly we, don't we think we'll. We have to we'll, take it at 43, so we will. That's right. And I don't think we'll ever know. So we're not going to get to know mm-hmm. if this is better at 46. So And he, Richard like specifically said, we're not changing our core range. Right. Yeah. Maybe they change their mind in a couple of years. They're allowed to do that. It's their company. But for now... They're not changing their core range. No, they're, and I don't sell, blame they're them selling it's, it, and if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. Um, That's and, and they have other options because there's a you, huge market for whiskey at that, that yeah, ABV, right? Like, for sure. And like I said, they they have other options. You can buy the contrast series. You can buy the cast strength series. Yep. Right. You don't need to get the core range if you don't want it. And you know what? Those exact words were echoed by our good friend Aquavita. He said the same thing. Yeah. He's like, you know what? You could fault Ben Romick for being at forty three with their core range. They should be at forty six. But guess what? You have all these other ranges that are coming out with that are cast strength and amazing, or forty six and amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So there you have it. That's it. Leave us a comment down below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And give us a little like. Yeah. Um, give we're, us a comment. We're debating whether or not to put a Whiskey Rant like YouTube channel out. Like, I've already set it up. I'm not sure if we're going to launch it yet. We haven't fully decided. We want to know what you think. So you guys let us know in the comments below. Do you want a Whiskey Rant YouTube channel? Do you think... It would be a good idea to just go to a channel where you can find all the whiskey rants. Yeah, and um, we would launch it ad free. Ad free. So you could subscribe to the Whiskey Rant podcast channel, just the podcast, That's and you'd it. watch every single rant ad free. Ad free. And um, then eventually, maybe we would keep it like just for Patreons, or maybe, I don't know. We're, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. But yeah, I think it makes sense. 
the, the, like this podcast just has its own channel. I think eventually that's what what's, what's going to happen because I don't know. There's the Whiskey Ram podcast is a lot of fun. I love doing it. Whiskey in the Six, I like doing it, but it's not as fun as it used to be. So we'll see. And we have these nice mics. And we have these great mics <laughs> that I still don't know how to use properly. And like sometimes <laughs> I punch it or it punches me. <laughs> Mic position will be a constant battle, I think, with you. For sure. Yeah. For sure. We talked about this already. <laughs> the Rain Man moments. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching and listening, everyone. Um, tune in next time. We'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers.